Hello and welcome to this pit stop for Microbrew. Microbrew is designed by Nigel and Sarah Kennington. It's published by One Free Elephant and will be on Kickstarter until the 1st of October 2018. And this pit stop has been filmed using prototype components. Microbrew is a two player game taking around an hour to play in which each player is attempting to manage their own copper within a brewery, attempting to get the most loyal customers and the player with the most loyal customers at the end of the game is going to be the winner. It's a worker placement game. On each player's turn, they're going to take one of their workers and place it somewhere within the brewery and take that action. A round will last until each player has played all of their workers, and then we're going to have a rest phase reset and go again until all of the customers have been claimed. And what can you do? Well, these four actions up here in the brewery are related to how you manage the warts within your copper looking to set up the beers you're looking to brew. Now when you place a worker, you can go somewhere where the other player is, however that gives them back that worker and extends the number of actions they can take on a turn. In this case we're going to go to the mash action. For the mash action, you're going to shake up the tin, this is what the game comes in. It's also practical within the game and you're going to reach in there and blindly draw out enough warts to be able to fill up any empty spaces which are in your copper at the time. And that's going to give you the basis of ingredients which you'll then be using to make your beers. Now there's a slightly slimmer, similar action called flush. You'll notice that there's these green components within there. Those are maltings. They are not going to help you make beer. The other ones are dark, medium and light warts and they'll be found on the recipes and indeed on the customer's preferences as you look. When you get lots of maltings, you might want to take this flush action, which allows you to remove all the maltings from within your copper. Then it lets you go into the tin, but this time you get to look inside the tin and choose which warts you require in order to place within your copper, which will allow you to set up, hopefully, a combination of warts which will match the recipes and customers you're hoping to please. Now the last way in which you can manipulate these warts within your copper is you can take the brew action. When you take the brew action, you choose one particular wart and you can move it up or down. Now, light colored ones can only move up through spaces through darker colored ones. So this one can move all the way up here, going through the darks and the mediums and swapping place each time as it goes through and get all the way to the top if you require it. And similarly, if you had one that was darker than one below it, it can move downwards, hoping to create the patterns you require. When you go to a space within the brewery where the brewmaster is, what that does, it gives your opponent one free brew action to allow them to manipulate the warts within there still. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we getting these all in these positions? Because the other action we can take down here is to bottle. In this case, we're gonna choose one of the columns within our cop copper, and we're gonna put that into a recipe. Now we have a hand of recipes which will build up during the game and there's also recipes always available to us. And we choose one of those recipes and we move a whole column onto there. Noting that while there are warts marked on the recipes, you do not have to match exactly the warts to the recipe, but it might be quicker and easier and more efficient for you to do so. And you'll see how that works because every time each player completes an action and this gets passed across the other player, each players get to do some fermenting with the beers they've bottled and that means that either they've got a wart on a space that matches its type and they can remove that completely and that beer is closer to being able to be served now if you have a wart that doesn't match the space you can move it across this contaminant space and on another turn you could then remove it or you can leave it lying around there if you want why are we doing all this because we're going to want to serve these beers when you serve a beer, you take a beer that's ready, it's got nothing left in its line, and you choose a customer available to you to serve that beer to. You're gonna have your own lineup of loyal customers you'll be able to serve again and again, and thirsty customers are gonna come into play, and they all have their own preferences, and you're gonna earn a certain amount of money depending upon what their preferences are. So, let's say we took this beer that we've just brewed here, and we're looking to serve it by taking the serve action. We choose one of these thirsty customers, and this customer prefers a Czech Pilsner. It wants light, light, dark, and dark. We've got light, 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 and dark. So it's not a perfect match. We don't leave this beer on perfect. We turn it one way anti-clockwise down to smooth, which may well earn us slightly less money. And in this case, we've left a contaminant on there. We don't want to spend the time to get rid of that. So that puts it all the way around to rough. Now that's still going to earn us money. In this case, it's three that we move up on here. And this customer is no longer thirsty for this round. That recipe goes back in our hand and we can continue playing. The customer over here, payer over here, has been slightly smarter. They've been able to brew this one during the course of the game, 
and this has got four medium warts and this customer wants exactly a Tokyo extra dry lager with four medium warts in there. When they serve this beer to this customer, it becomes a loyal customer to them and comes down here. And that is a point for them going towards the end of the game. And again, the recipe comes back into the hand and they'll be able to serve that customer again and again using the same recipe, which will earn them some more money. Those are the main mechanisms in terms of preparing your copper, getting your beer bottled up and then serving it to customers. There are three other actions you can do within the brewery. When you come across here to the manage, you can spend some of the money that you've been earning. You can spend $1 to take a worker back on overtime. You can spend $2 to look through the recipe stack. You'll claim one of them. You can draw three, claim one, put one available and put another one back in the stack. You can hire staff for $3, which brings your third worker into play. Or for $4, you can upgrade your copper. And in that case, you make that fifth column available to you so you can have more warts in play at once. You can also come up here and take a break. When you take a break, you earn $1, which is handy. And also all the thirsty customers that have been turned face down become thirsty again because time has passed. And the last thing you can do is advertise. Now, advertising is very expensive. You must pay five money for each loyal customer you've claimed so far in the game. You then get to draw three cards from the customer deck. One becomes a loyal customer to you. One becomes a thirsty customer and the other one goes back into the deck. At the end of the game, which is when the customer deck has run out, you're gonna check and see who's got the most loyal customers and there's a couple of bonuses you can earn. There's always one bonus card that's dealt out face up at the beginning of the game that says the, whoever in this case has got the most US or Jamaican customers is gonna earn one loyal customer to add to their score. And also each player is gonna be dealt two of these at the beginning of the game and they can score one of them. And again, they're gonna be linked to getting regions of customers or particular types of brews. In this case, it's multi-brews. And if you've got the most malt recipes, as delayed on the top here, you're going to get one loyal customer again. If you tie on loyal customers, it's whoever's got the most money left. And if you tie on that, then beer itself is apparently the winner. Now I said these are prototype components. Here are some examples of the final art for you to get more of an idea of what the finished product will look like. And like I said, it's on Kickstarter until October the 1st, 2018. This has been a pit stop for Microbrew. Please check out our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And for more in-depth coverage of gaming, please check out the Game Pit Podcast. Thanks.